Welcome back to the Football Terrace. Hit like buttons, subscribe. Give us your thoughts and feelings below. Huge fallout in the title race after Manchester City and Arsenal picked up three points. And of course, Liverpool capitulating, really, away at Old Trafford after dominating. We're going to take a look at TalkSport, DR Sport, and Sky to hear some of their top opinions and to essentially gauge what you think and feel. As I say, hit the like button. Check out my new channel at the end as well, The Squad. Scan the QR code on the screen. Go and subscribe over there. Let's take a little listen here and start with Simon Jordan and Sunes at Talk Sport. And the set of games, right, Simon? You look at 11 games, 2024, 10 wins, one draw, 38 scored, four goals conceded. Yeah. No, they're, 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 you would like to think if you go and spend 200, 250 million pounds in the transfer window, that you're going to give yourself an opportunity to improve on last. <laughs> So Arsenal spend money and improve, but because they spent money and improved, you play it down. Yet the same man will sit there and slag Man United off for spending money and not getting better. (laughs) You see why I call this out? Because they talk out of both sides of their mouths. And a fact surrounding this, Man City spent more money last summer than Arsenal. So City with the treble winners, spent around 20 to 30 million pounds more than Arsenal. But yet Arsenal were being almost having any improvement they made diminished because money has been spent. Strange that. Undeniable that they choked last season. Whether we want to use choked or bottled or fell at the final hurdle or dropped at the last furlong or whatever terminology we want to use, Arsenal snatched defeat from the for victory from the jaws of whatever around. You know what I mean? Defeat I know what you're going to. He's waffling. He's waffling so bad he's getting his... Uh, expressions and sayings and everything all mixed up. And, and I think Arsenal are, are a better side as a yeah. result of it. And but it's not about happens. how you spend your money, though, Simon. Of course. Check- exactly. It's about how you spend your money. City spent more, but they didn't replace the quality that left in Laporte, Palmer, of course, Gundogan, Mares. And reason why Liverpool and City have been praised so much in the past seven or eight years is how well they've done at building their squad, how excellently they've done, how excellent they've been with the players they've sold, the players that they've then gone and purchased, as an example, the way they've kind of knitted this all together so impeccably well. Arsenal do it, but it's a reason to beat them over the head with. Strange. Chelsea have spent a fortune, look at what they've got. Arsenal have spent a lot of money, but look at where they've got to. Of course. And, you know, you know, if you'd, have, if you'd have asked questions about Kai Havertz six months ago, people would have been saying, like I'm saying, like I have said repeatedly, it's, it looks like a tax write-off, for Christ's sake. How bad you got to be to get spend 65 million quid? Now he looks like a player that's scoring a few goals. I would have expected Arsenal to have stayed. I said they'll spend 250 million quid to stay where they are, and they'll do well to stay where they are. And they've spent 250 million quid, and they've improved. So why not just say that? They've invested well, they've improved, fair play to them. Why have you got to make it sound negative? <laughs> now, I don't know whether that's because Man City aren't quite the dominant force that they were a year ago, or it's really oh. because Arsenal have been so impressive. I think it's probably a combination of the two, but they can win this league. You, you, they can win the league. And do you know what I find really interesting? Some people will go, can we simp in for Arsenal again? Timestamp this, three minutes and 40 seconds right now. If you're going to take what Simon Jordan is saying as red, go, actually, I agree. Then if you're a Liverpool fan or a City fan agreeing with this, you're diminishing your own history because you've spent lots of money to create these squads that you have. Huge money on salary, huge money on agent fees, huge money on transfer fees, as per most champions in top flight football, period. Equally, though, this whole notion of, well, Arsenal may be only there because one of the top teams has gotten a little bit worse or has fallen off slightly. But by that same logic, you could use that logic against any champion. Say, well, if the previous year's champions had had got better or hadn't fallen off, and if you hadn't spent money to get better and they hadn't fallen off in conjunction, you may not have been champions. Chelsea's team that won under Jose Mourinho first year, if Arsenal's Invincibles had got even better, and Chelsea hadn't spent loads of money, they may not have won the league. That is a that is a fair point. But if you apply that to everybody, you're diminishing all champions ever, barring the first champions that ever made it. So it's an absolute nonsense take when you boil it down. 
when you boil it right down and look, the only reason that I defend Arsenal in these circumstances is because when you take their logic and apply it across football, it diminishes your own club's past. Who the hell? Who the hell would do that? <laughs> I think Liverpool have probably got more goals, you know, more players they can bring off the bench to maybe try and win a game. But we know Liverpool are more chaotic. The other two, I would say, Manchester City definitely have more control. So do Arsenal. And that's just let Liverpool down a little bit today. The fact that they are a little bit more chaotic has just allowed Manchester United to get back into the game and Liverpool to... I don't think Liverpool were chaotic. They they they, they fell into Man United's trap and, and were being chaotic and being emotional as opposed to sticking to their game plan. And we saw that a little bit last season towards the end of the campaign from Arsenal. Almost a little bit of immaturity, which Klopp has got to try and stamp out very, very quickly. To drop uh, two points, but hey, I think Arsenal may have games where they, they don't score. You know, maybe away from home, they, they're trying to chase that one goal. Whereas I think Liverpool will always score goals. Uh, and Manchester City. That's a strange take. Arsenal have scored three more goals in the league this year than Liverpool. So I'm not too sure where, where he's getting this Arsenal might struggle to score. I mean, in fact, Arsenal have scored more goals than anybody in the league this year. Conceded less, scored more. Strange. And Manchester City. Uh, I think for Liverpool to win the league, and I've always believed this, I think they need the two of them to play each other in the Champions League semi-final. I think they both need to get through because I know psychologically, physically, what it's like playing an English team at that sort of... When we play Chelsea a lot in those games in the semi-final, it takes a lot out of you. And when you're also going for a league title as well, I think that could still help Liverpool. But there's just this thing that... And look, if it is... An lesson, old... I mean, to, to a degree, you might be right if, if they play each other in those, in those semis. But at the same time... Playing each other, playing Real Madrid or playing Bayern Munich, they're all going to be really tough games, irrespective of what goes on. I, th I think that's clutching a little bit there. Um, I really do. Normal season where all the sort of, if you like, front runners drop points, then great, it'd be great for us. But you just have this thing about City where you think that they could go perfect and that every point, all the points drop by teams like Liverpool. Does anybody think City are going to go perfect? Like genuine question, do you think City, City are now the bookmakers' favourites again? The uh, Opta have made them 40% chance of winning it, Liverpool 31%. Arsenal were still third favourites with the bookmakers and with all the statisticians, Opta, etc., due to their run being harder. And I agree. I, I actually, I, I'm, I'm still marginally favouring Liverpool because they are point ahead of Manchester City. But I still make Arsenal third favourites from this particular point due to who they have to play and where they have to go. But do you guys agree? Liverpool or Arsenal not having that three-point cushion. Arsenal not just getting that goal on that Trossard. Brady, isn't it? Sack at sort of the Etihad uh, last week, whenever it was. Just things like that. I always think that if you're going to win a title and you're going to shift a mountain of a team like City, you've got to do something. Like, you know, If Liverpool score late on here, I nearly said it with five minutes to go, that on, on your way into a title, you need to win one of these you know what I mean? It might be a different time. It might be in a couple of weeks that that game comes from Liverpool. So I'm not saying they're out of the title race today, but just when Arsenal didn't get that goal at City. You know, City didn't score in that game against Arsenal as well, right? And they were at home. <laughs> and Liverpool didn't get that goal late on having equalised here. I'm not Because of City's perfection and City's way, that. you just get the feeling that you might be looking back at the end of the season and thinking, well, because of the high standard, that this is where it could be lost. There's an element of truth to that. That's why City are a lot of people's favourites still. Well, where do you sit on this argument? I would love to know in the comment section. Up next, a clip from DR Sports, and I really want to get your opinions on this. Have you heard Arsenal fans saying this? Let me know. Arsenal fans right now, please don't do it. Don't fall into this trap saying you deserve to win the league. Nobody deserves to win anything until the final day on the final whistle. Mm. And where you are in the league is exactly what you deserve in football. Mm. That's it. And it doesn't matter how wonderful you play. I watched my team play the best football I've ever seen in my life and may ever see. And it still wasn't enough to win the league. And that might be you this, this year, guys. And that's okay because you'll kick on and win it the next year, maybe. But don't count them yet. It's not over, lad. Simple as that. <laughs> Listen, I, I, great clip there from DR Sport. Love the channel and, and, and everything that they are doing over there. And I don't actually disagree with what he said in terms of where you finish is, is pretty much where you deserve to be. You know, we've had these years where United have come second. Everybody said it's a false second. I disagree. I do disagree with that. You finish where you're meant to finish uh, and you deserve that. But I have, go I have sort of 
Twitter search. Arsenal deserve to win the league. Arsenal deserve it. There are a few tweets. The ones I've seen so far have actually all been from rivals as opposed to um, Arsenal fans themselves. But I haven't personally seen many Arsenal fans say they deserve to win the league. And maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm missing this. Maybe you've all seen it. Please uh, copy into your comments the links to YouTube videos or Twitter accounts that have said this. I'd love to see it. I don't think Arsenal fans have. I think Arsenal fans are saying they can win it. Some are saying they think they will win it. But I haven't seen any YouTubers really say that Arsenal deserve it more than City or Liverpool. But maybe I'm just tripping. But look, I want to end this video by saying this. I think the title race is still, it was the first sort of twist and turn. I don't necessarily, necessarily think the draw for City and Arsenal was a twist or a turn per se. But this was the first one because Liverpool were expected to win. They were dominating. They were leading and it fell away. There are going to be more in the weeks to come. In, I think it's six weeks until the end of the league. There's going to be many trials. There's going to be many tribulations, many ups and downs. As an example, there's a weekend coming up soon where I think Arsenal and Liverpool both play. But Man City don't because they've got a, an FA Cup game. There's going to be loads of ups and downs, loads of toing and fro in. Where's your head at with who the favourites are? From this point, how do you think Arsenal are going to contend? Where do you think Liverpool will end up? Will Man City remain perfect until the end of the campaign and win every single match? Give us your thoughts and your feelings below. Until next time, take care. Goodbye, God bless, and I'll see you all again soon. Peace.